thanks for uh, thanks for joining into the uh, weekly grape AMA. Um, another reasonable decent week. Uh, we'll launch the um, uh, yeah the X grape and soda press last um, last Sunday, and uh, and that's as well as the, the sort of the new layout on, on the on the UI, which sort of um, you know I guess like simplifies things and. Uh, you know, it comes with a, a nice, nice uh, color scheme as well. Uh, more, more of a dark theme, but um, you know, it, it lays things out nicely. In that, you know, before uh, everything was kind of like really focused towards the um, to the scenery side, which you know is is uh, made a lot made made a lot of sense when we launched. You know, in January, we we're like you know, obviously scenery protocol. Tomb Fork basically is very popular back then, um, and that's all we were really. But you know, over these sort of it's been like nine months, um, we've um, added a lot new, a lot of different features. We've sort of branched out into uh, other things as well, like you know, we have some NFTs. We uh, have a have a play to earn game. Um, you know, we have some other utilities like um, some, like a casino like uh, a couple of burn games then we have some you know lock staking some other roi contracts you know x grape that we just launched you know it's a couple other things and it's hard to keep track of everything well it's hard to like i guess showcase everything um uh, on a site uh that's that was originally designed for seniorage um so so that's kind of why we've uh you know rearranged things to to, to showcase the, the the products and features and, and things that you can do on the site uh, first, um, as like a you know when when you first come to the come to the the homepage uh, rather than having to you know dig through the docs and dig through you know the side menu and all this sort of stuff. So, but you know it's, everything's a work in progress still, and you know we'll continually update and add new things and and uh, you know rearrange things and see see how we go from there um but also it's a cool thing we uh crossed over thousand epochs thousand epochs of operation um which is uh six thousand hours of uh, of operation that's 250 days 250 days um obviously that's, te that's technically not the you know exact day we launched you know because um the the epoch start i think you know day two or three uh, i can't remember exactly because you, know, you have the genesis i think we had the genesis for a day maybe two days and then we started the the um the boardroom or the winery so to say which is when the epoch sort of started but thousand epochs we crossed um you know not a lot of tomb forks uh even get to thousand epochs of operation so you know it's a quite an achievement to have uh, made it to a thousand epochs, two hundred fifty days. So I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, here's to another thousand. But um, yeah, in 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 saying that though, you know, we with um, X Grape and uh, and the the soda press that launched. Um, uh essentially a week ago now we've got um reasonable amount of uh tvl in there actually um and i think i'll do the numbers uh we have 95 okay, i can have a look at the well, look at the actual oracle um, um wait. Oh, the wrong article. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just say we've got ninety-five thousand three hundred seven magic LP tokens in in um, as as part of X Grape backing X Grape, um, and that comes out to about uh, uh, one hundred twenty one hundred twenty thousand dollars TVL of uh, LP tokens backing that. So. That's that's within a week as well. It's been growing pretty steadily as well, and that's uh, you know every new amount that goes in and out as well uh, contributes to your backing uh, of that. Uh, right now, it's sitting at um, 
guess where's the price yeah 107 10744 um so now each each x grape token is worth 107 magic farm tokens which is also gone up now it's worth 1.24 uh lp tokens um and in terms of the soda press soda press has about almost 60,000 um almost 60,000 lp tokens in there uh which is is over $60,000 as well in there as well so that's pretty cool as well that's nice good uh sync for grape and um you know it it also adds it adds more uh liquidity to the main pair as well because it's using the the auto compounding lp uh and it's uh you know, it's adding it's adds some sell pressure to 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 wine, of course, but uh, you know, it half of that sell pressure is used to buy grape in saying that. And then obviously you get the burn from the magic vaults as well. But when we look at the actual numbers of like, you know, I guess sell pressure, if you're concerned about that on, on wine from the auto compounding, I mean in the actual raw dollars it's it's not that much. I mean it's uh you know the the entire swapsicle LP gets about five hundred dollars worth of wine a day, so that's essentially the maximum. If if all LP in the swapsicle um, was in the order compounding, it would be five hundred dollars worth of sell pressure on wine. So like it's not really that much. Um, and uh, also like you know maybe like a hidden hidden success stories kind of like the the wine press really you know we've it's been growing pretty consistently uh we've got like almost 10,000 lp tokens in there um the lp tokens are uh worth uh it's like eight eight nine dollars so you know, it's like 90 grand, 100 grand in terms of dollars, but in terms of like LP tokens, it uh, it continues to go up in terms of LP tokens. It's almost half of the entire wine mim LP is in the wine press, and that's pretty cool because that means that kind of like it's um it's it's a way that the 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 presses, the wine press, the soda press, and we'll bring out some other presses as well. Um, are a sort of like a default way to um, incentivize uh, liquidity post emissions. So it's you know it's not going to be our only way, but it is kind of like a, a a default way almost to have an incentive for LPs um, post emissions, post wine emissions. Uh, also looking to do some uh, some more bonding for uh, get, to get some more POL. Um, because that will help the protocol uh, more effectively stabilize prices as well, which is always nice. It's kind of like the goal of uh, protocol liquidity there. Um, and I guess that's kind of like the the main gist for the for the week. Just want to recap those couple couple things. Um, and was that, was that bonding more of the rebates or more of the that initial phase of the peg campaign? Yeah, it's more of like a uh, a rebate in terms of I'm looking to do something where you get almost like an interest coupon um, for bonding uh, protocol uh, for for bonding liquidity, um, and you get uh, you know some upfront um, rewards and then access to rewards uh, ongoing. Until they until the emissions stop, so you know, we're working on some numbers on that. That's currently an idea, but it's it's a way to uh, you know we want to increase protocol liquidity as well, and it's um, it's kind of a good time as well for the protocol to do it when it's when it's a low price as well because we get you know the protocol gets a good deal uh, doing doing so um, from you know we can we can scoop up uh, good bags this time in other words. Um. But yeah, I don't know if you want to say anything for the week. I will get on to the uh, onto the onto the questions. Yeah, I want to plug the wine chart that I came out with yesterday. Just I still see a lot of people wondering what to do with their wine in the meantime. 
Um, so oh, I yeah. threw out a wine chart just to remind you there's various options in the vineyard if you do have free grape or free mim or even pops. Um, and there's always the wine press as well. Uh, but the the main thing I want to stress is that you can just hold your wine too. It doesn't necessarily have to be making a daily yield from staking somewhere. Um, if wine from where it is now goes up to around bucks over, you know, something reasonable like a three month period, then that's still a one percent daily yield on your wine just from mm-hmm. appreciation. Mm-hmm. If it goes up to twenty bucks over one month, which it's not unreasonable. That's a 3% daily yield. So just a, a reminder that you can think about your wine as an appreciating asset, not necessarily as something that you need to stake. So your wine is still working for you, even if it's not making a, a daily yield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's that's good. very good points. And everybody should make sure to um, to definitely read and digest uh, all, all of, all of uh, Fizzle's charts uh on pretty much every aspect of the protocol has covered everything uh and it's all really if you want to know anything they'll they'll be covered in those charts really <laughs> and, and if anything's missing let me know i'll be happy to make another one yeah yeah exactly yeah all right well i mean we'll get on to the to the questions i guess i think um uh i think what was the last date it's 18th 18th all right all right so i think the we'll, we'll start with lettuce i think um i think we did the uh, for an upcoming partnerships maybe the the bots performing can we get an update on how the bots performing uh with the treasury i think there was a uh there was a twitter post um with um a dashboard that uh, one of the bot the uh, one of the bot pro- providers uh, linked us, and I can link that. Out. I don't think I can provide the actual link. I don't think he wants to provide the link out, um, but I can take daily screenshots even of it. Uh, essentially, uh, right now we only have about ten grand in there. I'm looking to double that up, like pretty much today. Um, it's doing well. It's made about eight hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, in like you know, uh, I mean that's eight percent uh, return. Um, in sort of like two, two and a bit weeks. So I mean that's not bad. There's been some good vol- volatility. Um, to, that that it, it feeds on that, which is nice. Uh, but it's it, we're sort of like running more of a test run. I'm running some bits uh, bots on Astro Astrobit as well. Some have done well, some have done sort of not well. So we've kind of like evened out there, really. Uh, but that's kind of the the point of the the um, the testing, so that I can, you know, in other words, uh, you know, double down on the ones that are performing well. So. So in other words, I'm going to double down on, on Sweet Eaters bots and then also a couple of the Astrobit bots and, and get rid of a couple of the other ones. So that's what's going to be happening uh, very soon. Well, essentially, like, you know, this week. Um, and I guess... Uh, wait, I lost the page. Um, oh, how... Uh, oh, are you planning... Need grape, need grape. Uh, are you are you planning to offer? Are you planning on offering Vinium as a service to other protocols so they can collateralize our assets and generate some revenue for Grape Vinium? Um, I guess the Vinium is more like an end user service, and protocols can use that service. Uh, but the the thing that we need to do with um, Offering well, essentially, there's going to be stages, right? The 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 initial stage is end user with um, generalized uh, generalized um, tokens and also tokens that are uh, interest bearing as well for end users to uh, collateralize and then and then borrow. Um, and protocols can obviously do that with their treasury, but um, uh, then you know phases beyond that will be obviously we're going to be doing leverage yield farming, 
and also uh, we're going to be doing uh, permissionless, uh, you know, isolated lending. And in, in in that sector, in the permissionless isolated lending, we can do uh, more, I guess you could say, higher risk um, assets uh, for other protocols um, to to list on there because. The you know the way lending works on on the current system you know with the Aave system is that it's it's essentially shared pools. So if if one pool is is vulnerable, that's the weakest link of the entire platform. Which means that if that pool if there's bad debt in that pool, the entire system has bad debt, which is exactly what you want to avoid. Very much so. So in other words, we need to choose the loan to value, the collateral ratios essentially, and um, what assets are chosen in that sector in that in that first phase very carefully if we just allow anything to be listed there and it has like twenty dollars of liquidity then that token is not going to be liquidated and whoever borrowed with that token as collateral um, has just caused the system debt that can't be paid back so that's something that uh you know it's um coming in later phases because it needs to be done in an isolated manner so that if if um, there is a, you know a, if a higher risk token with lower liquidity can be borrowed against which we do want to do that um, it's borrowed against in an isolated pool that only affects that pool so that's something that we'll be doing but it's kind of more of like a longer term phase uh, for the for the project um Carbred, he's changed his name. Carb, Carber, Nitalador. <laughs> uh, how long can grape survive bear market? Well, I guess it's uh, you know we're we're surviving it, so I guess we just continue. All you have to do really is just continue, uh, continue working, continue building stuff, and then that's how you basically survive it. You come out the other end by um, continuing to um, to work basically, and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, Need Grape is asking um, out of interest why are you implementing Vinium as a separate service with its own website branding and token instead of integrating it more directly into the Grape ecosystem. Um, essentially, it's because it, it will have a better reach when we do so. Um, Grape's brand is really, uh, you know, like Mimi. It's like a game, Mimi, it's fun, it's sort of degen, you know. And uh, Vinium is is sort of more more branded towards, uh, you know, more of a an ecosystem of DeFi services, so, you know, with lending at its core, they'll leverage yield farming things like that, which has a wider reach than you know a Degen protocol. Uh, and and in other words. It's um, it's still going to be very closely tied into Grape in that you know obviously Grape's going to be uh, you know used as collateral and that's a pretty big thing uh, from the get go. But uh, even still, you know, wine will be a um, a revenue share for the protocol. Uh, uh, initially, we're not going to have a token for Vinium like at, at the initial launch. Um, so essentially, wine will get the the major share of of um, revenue um, in the beginning, and uh, you know, grape will be grape. The grape ecosystem will very closely tied in with Vinium, but in terms of like a branding and like marketing aspect, uh, it it's 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 almost a different market. In other words, um, it's less degen, and and grape is like the degen fun side, and Vinium is more like the serious DeFi side. And they cross over, but um, it, it allows us to have more of a, a wider reach, I believe. Um, James Vu is asking, um, as a grape investor, personally excited for Vinium because of its synergy with the rest of the ecosystem and how I can leverage my current position. But as Vinium is a separate service, as you mentioned, it's meant to attract big non degen wallets. What sets it apart? Um, why would they choose it over Ave? Uh, Alchemix Abra, yeah, it's a good, good uh, question. So that's essentially uh, initially. Uh, well, well, first of all, uh, Vinium is the the initial phase of Vinium is going to be similar to Aave. 
but um, you know, from there, we're expanding pretty rapidly to um, you know offer a lot of other services uh, that build on top of that. So you know, Aave is, is um, you know brilliant at doing uh, you know standard lending pools, but you also have plenty of other platforms on all chains as well that compete with Aave, and they do pretty well. Like um, you know, Ben Keys on on Avax too. They have a really good, um, essentially the same thing. I mean, they offer, you know, um, liquid staking as well, but that's technically a different product. Um, but their core product, the lending, is the same. Uh, and then, you know, you on 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 AVAX before you had things like uh, Blizz as well. It's technically the same thing. Uh, essentially, a Geist fork. Um, so, in other words, like even still, there's still uh you know room market share room for it uh essentially in a in a free market you would want numerous competitors of the same product regardless uh rather than a monopoly um but the the point is that we're going to be offering quite a few things that uh Aave won't be offering in the in the long term especially so we're going to be combining it with uh leverage yield farming that's going to be using the original lending pools, so the Aave style lending pools, the leverage yield farming will be using those as um, uh, you know pools to borrow from, and uh, then as well, you know we can we're, we're looking at building things on top of the Aave platform, uh, you know the Vinium Aave style platform, such as automated uh, shorts, uh, automated long positions that you can uh, you know essentially like one click into that um and things like as well uh leverage positions into that as well so that you can you know loop around uh and, and get a yield off that that will come later on when the when the token launches um and that's not leverage yield farming it's a separate service um just on the lending pool uh and then obviously one of the one of the initial things will be more of us using uh, yield bearing assets rather than pure, uh, you know, standard assets that, uh, you know, things like Aave use, you know. So we're going to be using obviously SAVAX, um, and I'm looking at doing some other, some other yield bearing assets on AVAX specifically, like, um, looking at DMX's services on, on, uh, AVAX. They have a really popular, uh, perpetuals trading platform on AVAX. Um, we can use that as collateral. Um, essentially, we're going to be focusing primarily on on the yield bearing assets uh, rather than. Obviously, we'll still have to have the standalone assets like, uh, or you know, not the non yield bearing assets like uh, you know, the typical um, stable coins and you know Bitcoin Ethereum. But uh, we'll be leveraging uh, yield bearing assets where we can to kind of offer. Essentially. People allowing people to even use, you know, um, Benki or or Aave, and then use us as well on top of that. So that's kind of where I want to position ourselves to um, not compete kind of directly with them, but also uh, allow us to not have to compete directly with them and and, uh, instead uh, offer a, a more wider array of services. That can also utilize their tokens as well um, is kind of the goal for for us. So, some are competing, but also really uh, there's some synergies there as well that we can uh, have with these platforms. So that's kind of where we're going to go with that, and and uh, you know aggregate the the services. Well, plus we're going to go cross chain pretty quickly. Uh, looking at um, either I'm already looking at um, ZK Sync to kind of get on there almost almost as soon as they launch their main net because um, that will be a pretty big, I believe, um, layer 2 for Ethereum uh, launching later this year. And um, same as uh, looking at uh, the Synapse chain when that launches because then, then we can access pretty much all chains uh from the get-go which would be really nice because then it's 
it's essentially you know on any chain you can access the the platform directly uh which is really which would mean really smooth uh lending borrowing you know you don't have to worry about cross chain basically you you're just uh using the platform on on sign chain is the idea but that um is uh i mean they haven't launched yet but they'll be launching i don't know in a, in a few months i believe um oh yeah peter flea i <laughs> guess who's back back again p is back peter flea uh tell a tell a great fam all right <laughs> uh so here's a big question sell, sell pressure still intense regardless of epic daps being released which is a real pity right now, being an OG. Curious if there's enough in soda and wine press to sustain protocol and the investors in it through the next year or more of bear. Next bull only starting in 2024, I believe. I'd uh, love to know your thoughts. Um, well, I guess, I mean, we can't control the market is like the idea. We can't control the market. Um, we can't control when, you know, the, the Federal Reserve starts doing QE again. Um, to, to bring in money back into the market, essentially. But uh, at the same time, what we can control and what we will focus on is, um, uh, you know, building things that can, uh, I guess, help relieve sell pressure, help, you know, like we have been doing, essentially, is, you know, create token sinks, create uh, extra burn mechanisms, and um, there's a couple a couple things that we're, we're thinking about right now as well and kind of uh, brainstorming um, and essentially in planning to um, really, uh, you know, almost be able to um, control uh, the price a little bit better. But so, so essentially, it's a great time now for us to experiment, and that's what we're we're doing. We're we're doing some experimental things that we can, that I think will have really good effect, uh, impact on, on the protocol as a whole, um, and as well as the tried and true things like, um, you know, burn mechanisms, uh, which, which we'll be updating through the game, uh, a couple of new mechanisms coming for that, and uh, you know, token syncs, which we already know as well uh we'll continue to um implement as well so i mean we have to focus on what we can we can actually control and that's what we can deliver so that's what we're going to do um so it's so peter flea in mentioning um can you explain the trading bots we're using magical money makers hmm, yes uh can we use outside protocol uh, I think I mentioned a little bit before um, on the other question. Um, essentially, from Astrobit, there's a few bots that we're using. You know, from Elevate, from uh, Red Bots, from uh, Falcon. Uh, I think it's Falcon, or something like that. Um, but you can go to Astrobit and you can sign up for those as well. Um, and uh, we're also using Sweet Eaters. I think it's Sweet Eater. On uh, on Twitter, he's he's trading bots on um, three commas. You can uh, you can also contact him and get him to uh, yeah, you know essentially sign up for that if you want to do that. So um, you know they 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 run different strategies. Um, you know, some some are long only, some are long and short. Some are you know single entry, where they you know buy at a point, sell at a point, you know uh, based on some indicator. And some are, you know, DCA sort of strategies where they, um, you know, buys it's going down, uh, and then and then flip the other way. So you know, uh, they're um, they they're doing all right. I mean, they they actually play with this volatility really well, so that's good. Um, okay, Peter Flea again. Um, also, just want to say, I really look forward to the AMAs. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I look forward to your to your uh, twenty questions for for AMA. You fill it up pretty well. <laughs> um, Big Waffachino is asking, um, when will return from trader bots be distributed? So, I mean, obviously, I can distribute eight hundred dollars now if you want. Um, <laughs> the idea is that 
Are you, what are you going to be getting? You're going to be getting, getting, getting like $1. So, I mean, the, <laughs> the idea is that uh, right now we're in testing phase to kind of, you know, I've got 10 grand in that bot uh, and uh, another 10 grand in the, in the attribute uh, range. So, in other words, we want to scale it up a little bit so that we can actually return some reasonable money. Like, it's not going to be, it's not going to be degen returns where you're earning 1% a day. Don't expect that. But this is going to be in USDC. It's going to be in actual stable coins or uh, probably MIM. Um, so it's going to be much less than you know what you may expect if you're expecting DJ returns. But it's going to be in a, in a token that you don't need to sell to to realize those gains. In other words, um, so in other words, if you're staked in the winery, that's that's your access to that pool. Uh, well, that is essentially the pull. Um, so, Al Al Mele, Al 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 Mele. Sorry if I stuffed that up. Uh, with the injection of these new tokens in here, are they a death sentence to the grape and wine holders that bought high? Um, I, do we have any other like? I don't know if you're talking about X grape. X grape is not essentially. It's like a new token, but it uses the great mim directly so it's not um you know it's not diluting any other tokens it's in fact helping the other tokens so um you know i think uh maybe misunderstanding there um big web chino is mentioning why is circulating supply of wine not available to see on coin market cap um i don't know those uh, coin market cap, coin gecko, those things are kind of like they don't read from anywhere. I don't believe. I think they just. I know we can probably look into that because I don't know why they do that, but uh, they're not accurate all the time. Yeah, you can always look it up on Snowtrace, though. You can yeah. see where they are. If if well, I don't know if you can see the wine that's in the winery. Um, you, maybe you can. You can see the winery yeah. contract. Otherwise, you can see the, the the circulating supply. You can see the amount that hasn't been released from the farm contracts. So you can you can take an accounting of where all the wine is on Snowtrace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Snowtrace most accurate data because it's actually indexing from the the contracts through the nodes that uh, you know put that data on the on the site basically. Um, Deja Vu is asking um, if uh, training bots do well. I imagine I imagine wine single stake will be popular and rewards diluted with more stakers. Uh, one way to boost single stake rewards is to boost training bot profit through increased TVL. Any thoughts on opening up training bot pools to public? Um, yeah, I mean that's something that we can do. Uh, think about how to do that. Uh, in a way that would make sense, maybe like some, you know, you get an NFT or something like that, or it's actually like you stake the, the, um, the thing is if we have a way you stake, there would need to be at least some sort of lock because the, the, the funds would have to be taken to the centralized exchange to run the bots. So, uh, you know, it's, you wouldn't be able to access a withdrawal instantly uh there would need to be some process for um withdrawals on that uh to, you know otherwise like you can't you can't withdraw if it's in a, in a if it's in a trade right now um so we have to work something out like that uh but that's something that we can look at doing as well but yeah like an nft i guess is like i guess the the the, the way a lot of people do it but uh, maybe want to do more of a pool. Yeah, I kind of like that idea because then Grape could take a share of profits mm -hmm. as as a revenue. People can still get exposure to trading bots that they wouldn't do on their own. It's mm -hmm. like it's a it's a service I would use. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah, let, yeah. Let 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 Grape skim some off the top of my of my trading. And it's yeah, you don't have to do any setup either or anything like that. Right. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. I think um, 
you know, as I said, right now, still testing phase. Like, you need, like, there needs to be some testing so that we then just put, like, you know, 100k into some bot that, you know, does some <laughs> stupid trade and we lose. Oh, come on, man. I thought, it. I thought you were a degen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna ramp it up and, uh, then, uh, we'll, We'll 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 look to do that as well. I think it's I think it's a good idea. Um, Need rape is asking now that we're edging closer to Vinium. Do we have an idea of how revenue from Vinium will be allocated within Grape and Vinium? What percentage will be diverted to Grape? What will go to Wine Stakers, Lock Staking, other areas? Um, yeah. So I guess Wine uh, the. So grape won't receive a revenue share. Wine will receive the revenue share for wine stakers in the winery as it is right now. Uh, we may develop a new contract, I guess. But I also want, um, you know, I think with the winery, it's 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 nice because you can have it so that you know you can earn revenue from the bots. You can earn revenue from from the uh, from Binium and uh, above peg you can earn senior age as well so it's kind of like all or three in one is is a nice thing uh but there's probably going to be another contract that we need to run alongside that um in terms of how like how it works of uh percentages um there's you know with with lending protocols it usually works like um there's a reserve there's a reserve ratio that the the platform takes in between the split of um, lending uh, uh, lenders and borrowers uh, percentage, basically. Um, so, you know, the borrowers pay the lenders, essentially. Um, and in between that, there's a uh, spread that the protocol itself gets, um, which, which is actually going to be adjusted per token as well, uh, because each token on the platform will have its own uh you know loan to value will have its own liquidation bonus its own uh liquidation ratio or um you know threshold and it will have its own reserve ratio as well and um part of that reserve ratio does need to actually go to the vinium sort of platform so that it could maintain a uh you know a treasury basically uh to cover uh, bad debt should it arise uh, as like a safety mechanism. We can't give away 100% of the profits because um, if we ever need some funds for um, for debt coverage, then we won't have them. So, but uh, there there will be a percentage that goes to the to the wine stakers uh, from each of the pools, uh, and each pool will have its own reserve ratio as well, which is that amount that goes to the pools. Um, y- Yell Crab is asking, um, can we get further clarity? Oh, yeah. Hey guys, I, I just want to say I'm very, very sorry that I wasn't oh, hey. there from hey, the young. beginning. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm all right with something. Life came in between and um, hey, I, I'm here now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad everything is ongoing and that so many uh, uh, of the team is here. I just want to say I'm here now, but um, just continue where you were because it's it's senseless for me to take over, right? <laughs> no, is you got but, anything to add? We'll uh, you know just jump in. Um, yeah, sure, I will. I will. Yeah, so I think uh, Yell Crab was asking. Um, uh, can we get f- further clarification of Grape Node UI for daily Grape reward and APR displayed? Is they are currently not correlated. Uh, calculating the daily Grape comes out to a lower daily APR than what is showing. The UI is showing daily Grape is accurate, so I've verified uh, that uh, based on that it was okay. Percentages. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll tell you that. Um, the APR of the of the nodes, and same as the um, the wine press, is based on your earnings to the amount that you have actually deposited. So it's earnings divided by deposit amount. When you when you compound, it's not a deposit, uh, so it doesn't count 
towards that. So if you if if you're going to calculate APR based on um, your amount of earnings divided by your node total, including compounded nodes, um, then it would be lower as you as you mentioned than what it shows on the UI. Um, the daily grape is always going to be an accurate figure because it's directly from the contract um, in terms of that's how much grape you're going to get per day. And um, the uh, the APR is then based on that daily amount of grape you get um, divided by your total nodes minus the nodes that you've compounded. So it's basically then your total amount that you have actually deposited into the contract um, as capital. So essentially, it's, you know, it's your APR, non-compounded uh, amount. Um, maybe we can add, like, you know, another one in there to maybe uh, showcase that. Kind of like the, the, the soda press or wine press have where it says, you know, total deposits which are actual capital deposits, and then it has uh, compounded deposits, which are from pending rewards that you have compounded in, so not fresh capital, and then like a total as well. Uh, we can probably add some stats like that to to, uh, to showcase that. Uh, Dirk, Dirk is asking, uh, or oh, like suggesting that AMAs put suggestions on the agenda. So we go through the suggestions. Um, yeah, I think that'd be. I think that's always something good to do if we have uh, some time. I usually, uh, I, it, yeah. It's good for discussions. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just mm -hmm. that uh, questions are easily uh, easily answered. Whereas if you discuss a suggestion, it might. Easily just take uh, 15 or 20 minutes per suggestion, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is not bad, but it's just, uh, it, it will take a lot longer. Uh, so if we no, got no, hours, definitely. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. It's it's more of a, um, we, we go through the questions and then, then we can look at the suggestions um, yeah. specifically. And if you have suggestions, like questions about suggestions, you put them in the AMS. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, lettuce. Lettuce is asking. Uh, so, someone is speaking, but it's very soft. When someone is, who who is that? Uh, maybe me. I'm just adjusting. Oh yeah, it was you. Sorry about that. I just thought <laughs> I'd say um we could potentially bring that into the uh, midweek AMAs as it's more of a like community uh talk. Mm hmm More like a discussion, yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, okay. Well I think um Yeah, and if we have like time, I guess in in the AMAs we can run through suggestions. I look at the suggestions I looked at them today, uh to to, to uh, have an idea of what's what's been going on and sort of uh run some ideas through things through my head. Um yeah, so I guess okay. Lettuce, lettuce is asking. I think it'd be great to see how Vinian will bring in a revenue in and how much can be expected. I think I touched on this before with Need Grape. Um, I mean, you can go look at uh, CryptoFees dot com. You can go look at um, there's another good one, analytics platform. Totally forgot it. Uh, but it's a, yeah, I don't know, damn. It's a really good one. To to look at, uh, essentially, actual revenue that protocols make. Um, so you can go look at crypto fees, that's one of them. Uh, you can see Aave is, like, literally one of the top ones there. Um, obviously they're huge, and they have, like, $10 billion of TVL, but, you know, obviously how it works is it works like a bank, in other words, you know? But less so like a bank uh, because it's decentralized uh, and P2P mostly. So, you know, you have lending pools, uh, people deposit in the pool, 
to uh, to become a lender to lend to borrowers. And so the, the, the borrowers pay an APR, pay a percentage of interest to lenders for the the for, for borrowing funds. Um, and in between that is a, essentially a spread that um, the protocol makes for offering the service. And then obviously there's um, a liquidation percent that uh, majority of the liquidation percent goes to liquidators uh, to incentivize them to liquidate, uh, but a percentage will also go to uh, the protocol for um, you know, essentially as a service provider. And um, then as well, you also have um, uh, things like flash loans and, and whatever that, that uh, there's a little fee on as well. Uh, but you know, it's there's no like, it's it's not like a dex. There's no like volume daily. Um, it's more uh, people borrowing and lending. Uh, usually, I mean, you really make money through the um, through the borrowing side. So you, so you do want to incentivize borrowing uh, because the borrowers are the ones that pay um, the lenders, which then pay essentially through the spread the protocol as well. So. Um, that's it's kind of an idea you want to incentivize the the borrowing there. Um, there's no there's no real volume in other words. Um, I think you need grape. It's asking about bots. I know the bots are only in testing, but what funds are you thinking of using for them in the future? Pre-existing large small part of the treasury, um, or dedicated fundraising effort for the bots. Yes. Yeah, so, so I mean that's something we touched on before. That's maybe something we do. Um, initially, right now we have about twenty grand, uh, which I think is like maybe like ten percent of the treasury. Um, and we'll probably up that. Obviously, we need cash. We need capital to um, in 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 a in a very liquid form, which is cash for expenses, because we don't want to be we don't want to overcommit to uh, the bots and then have to you know have an expense come up that we need to take away from the bots um, it's not efficient that way so uh, we the, we need to maintain a ratio uh, we're, we're looking at, at upgrading how much we put into the bots and we'll probably we'll probably continue to add to them you know what I mean it's probably a good idea to um, if they're performing well we continue to um, add to them over time if uh, the protocol is uh, making money in other words uh, old rope asking what is being done to increase decrease so, uh, or removes the cell pressure from vintage so in other words uh, vintage um, has low liquidity which is actually good for us in that we can uh, you know uh, maintain a price a little bit oh, very cheaply to be honest um, and something that uh, we're uh, we do every now and then but something that I need to do re uh, soon actually um but you know with with uh, vintage obviously we uh, need to continue to upgrade the game there's a couple things that that uh, we're brainstorming and kind of drafting out on the game to uh, deliver uh to kind of make more use of of vintage uh also looking at um you know a couple other things just some fun things really of like uh uses for vintage like um we're going to add it to the casino uh, we're going to um, add like a little, another locked pool, locked, uh, you could say maybe like a node or a, um, like a press for uh, S Vintage as well. Uh, S Vintage is a really good thing for Vintage uh, and, and the game and essentially Grape itself because, uh, you know, the more, um, uh, you know, right now it's a high fielding pool. It's over 1% a day in, in, the, in the vineyard. Which means that, you know, um, you know, you, you you're essentially locked the vintage in there, um, and then it uh, encourages, and you can earn wine at the same time over one percent a day, uh, and then not really have to even sell the vintage to to profit from the game, um, and then that essentially uh, loops back around into grape because the the game is. By far the 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 best um, 
uh, it, it, far, by far the best grape burner, um, without a doubt, uh, as well. So I think, I mean, there's a couple couple little things we can do uh, for, you know, we can use vintage here and there. Uh, but, uh, you know, essentially the, the main thing we're going to be doing is like, actually, you know, can you, you can use it in the game. Um, in certain aspects of the game that we're going to be upgrading. So, so that's yeah. kind of the idea to uh, decrease cell pressure on that. I um, thought, I'd, thought I'd mention one more thing as well. Um, we're looking to expand on multiple areas of the game as well to bring more interact- interactivity with each area and also with the grape ecosystem as a whole. So, yes, yeah, stay posted. Mm. Yeah. Um I don't know, were these questions in the um these next two questions in the uh oh yeah I think so. Yeah yeah. Uh yes. Paul Paul Darren. How you go, man? Um the the yeah, the question is uh wait, where is it? I've lost it. Oh, no, can you tell, tell us? us? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you can tell us a little bit about the single stake section of the recent announcement uh, regarding trader bots and such. Any timelines on launch? Um, I think I touched on this a little bit uh, before in that um, single stake is basically the winery uh, for, for wine as it is now. And um, the, the, the trading bots, like I can deliver the the revenue as it is there now uh two stakers but it's going to be like it's and it's, it's probably going to be minimal comp- for everybody in the in the pool so in other words uh i want to uh, increase how much capital we allocate first um and run it for you know at least a couple more weeks to generate some more revenue um and then drop it out to um uh, the wine stakers. So probably a couple of weeks. I think I missed. I missed. I missed. Hello, player. Um, when release new tools in Winemaker. When reopen Mint in Winemaker. Um. Uh, no exact dates. I I can't tell you exact date right now. Um. Want a time right? We have tools, but I think as well I want to do some like uh, cross promotional tools, some really rare cross promotional tools with other protocols, other sort of games as well. Um, as like a marketing thing for the game, and also something cool that's um, you know like a really rare tool that uh, you know is essentially very limited but very powerful as well. And also I want to look into some other things that we can do for the game, like. Um, you know, upgradable, upgradable tools where you burn other other levels and things like that would be nice. Uh, but that requires a bit more of a, um, a, co- a contract restructure to do that. Um, okay. I think. Uh, is that G G toppies G toppies? Is that correct? Whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, is is there a way of knowing the total remaining allocation for nodes V two? Um, I guess uh, like I, I mean, you can look at the total allocation. It's on the it's on the contract directly. If you go to the snow trace, you get a read. It will show you the total allocation. Um, I don't know if you mean something else. Yeah, uh, in regards to that, like, uh, I don't know, everything is is on the contract. So you can go look, um, total allocation points, but that does increase and decrease, you know, if new nodes are made, that increases the allocation points. If nodes are compounded, it increases it. If uh, nodes are claimed, it decreases it. So they, it will fluctuate. Um, hmm. 
I'm trying to find which um, question you're answering so that maybe I can help you. Uh, Jutopies, yeah, top 50 holders. No. Where are we, though? Uh, I think uh, I think it, this is more of a like a community discussion here. Yeah. Um, yeah, what what uh, I guess he was like. What I'd like to know is the total remaining allocation of all V two nodes. Let's not keep up with the total remaining allocation. So my daily grape drip keeps decreasing. Oh, this Chitopi's asking, yeah. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't decrease. Like, you should get more grape. Uh, your your grape amount per day should be increasing, um, or, or should increase uh, at least a little bit um, on that. Probably, probably look at the the grape. The, the actual amount that you get of grape. Um. Oh, I think... Uh... Maybe need grief. How's the audit going? Yeah, the audit is. Um, I mean, I, I mentioned before it was complete. Oh, I mean, it was like they, they returned it to us, um, and uh, we submitted um, some changes. We also added some some new things in that I wanted to add in, um, and so they're re essentially reviewing those changes and uh, the things that they suggested as well. Uh, and uh, I think that should be done, like, you know, pretty early on this coming week. Okay, GH toppies, it isn't. Every day decreasing by one, one to two grape. Uh, yeah, so it bumps, after, uh, bumps a little after a compound. Uh, well, yeah, you probably are being outpaced uh, in that regard then by um, either new nodes or, or uh, you know, or um, uh, other compounders, but also um, depending on uh, if you are, depending on how you're compounding, I guess, as well. If you're doing the compound where you um, do like 99 grape, um, and then you know you compound one node, claim 49, or whatever as well, like you're claiming the other portion tax-free, uh, but compounding the other portion, so compound on 50 or, or whatever. I mean the 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 because I guess it is it is based on the pool itself. You look at the pool. I mean the pool has stayed reasonably steady actually. One point two two million, one point two one five million grapes in the pool, uh, which is pretty steady. It's gone up a little bit. We'll be back on the, the Vinium topic. So after the audit and fixing a few changes, what's the general process? Not necessarily the schedule or the timeline, but what's the general process? Is like the next step is kind of refining the DAP or the front end interface and testing mm -hmm. that and yeah, then yeah. doing, you know, trial loans and that kind of thing. Or what are you, what's your general process? Yeah. So, so we've done it's, I mean, it's on test net now. 
Um, the problem with the testnet uh, is that you know we don't have access to um, a lot of uh, Ch Chainlink don't, don't have a lot of um, you know testnet oracles and things like that. Um, you know we can just create like dummy stuff, uh, but you know it's you know on the testnet it's very limited to uh, testing it like you would on the mainnet because uh, you don't have everything available but uh, you know it, it is there and we have done some testing on sort of like user flow and uh, integrating the dap and things like that and uh, so you know right now basically the what needs to be done is um, you know essentially finishing off the the, the design aspect of the UI um, and uh, you know finalizing then we have to deploy on main mainnet um, and uh, we're going to then uh, do do a bit do essentially a launch. We're going to launch uh, like a beta, a beta launch basically, where you're going to be able to uh, lend and borrow live on the mainnet. Uh, but um, essentially, we're not going to go like crazy uh, head first. It's going to be you know you're going to be able to lend and borrow. We're going to add add new features, um, get some feedback from from uh, external users on the mainnet um, as as we launch um, very soon, actually. So, so essentially, what we need to do is um, just polish up the design, and sort of some some little features of the UI need some polishing. Um, but uh, it's integrated uh, with the contracts and uh, on the testnet, and so then we just need to port it over to mainnet, um, and. Uh, that's it. I mean, that's basically it. Like, there's not actually that much. There's a lot of little things, I guess, but the, the, in terms of like the big things, there's not. There's not really any sort of like major big things that need to be done. I've been playing with it on the test net, trying to get myself liquidated for about a week, but I haven't been able to. The Ethereum and Bitcoin are oh, staying yeah. stable it's... enough. I mean, there's a thing with um as well with the test. Game, it's uh, it's um, you know, with with because the liquidations are uh, are um, on chain basically, like they're they're open to anyone. Anyone can be a liquidator. So um, and then the idea is that you want you will provide or we will provide a percentage, um, like a bonus that you get as a liquidator. To incentivize people to liquidate, so um, you know, so the, it's the a problem, manual liquidation. Yeah, uh, the, the, not I'm the, like, Okay. Yeah, the, the problem is that on the test, it's like who's <laughs> no one's who's gonna run the bot? for liquidation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, yeah, that's that's a that's, that's, so that's a kind of like the problem with the the test net sort of sort of deal is that it's not um, you you can test like eighty to ninety percent of things, but um, you can't test uh, every integration. You can't. It can't be exactly like it's going to be on on mainnet. Just because you're missing some of the pieces that uh, you know you, you don't have on test. Work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'm safe then. I'll take out some more DGen loans. You <laughs> <laughs> <Should> do that. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> LB stands for lending and borrowing. It does, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Lord Bacon or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, ah, do we have any other? Are there any other things here? I probably missed something. Oh, need, you uh, need X Grape is uh, saying. Uh, should bring him onto testnet so he can show off some spending skills to get liquidated. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, should, definitely uh, useful data. Definitely useful data. Yeah, I should. Um, uh, I should run a bot. You know, a test liquidation bot because we will have one that we will uh, just operate um, anyway as sort of like a backup. So I mean, we can probably put that on um, on testnet as well. Uh, 
Um, there's, a, there's one from Need Grape as well. Uh, what alpha are you going to finish this week's AMA off with? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if it's alpha. I mean, I think I already mentioned it, but we're going to... Um... Nick, Nick and Steve are going to the uh, SmartCon this week, this coming week, uh, in New York, which is uh, a pretty major um, uh, event. It's, it's Chainlink's event, Chainlink's um, SmartCon event in uh, in New York. It's um, and we're uh, Vinium going. Essentially, Vinium is a sponsor there. Uh, you know, there's uh, you know essentially all the big names. It's a it's a non degen crowd, which is kind of exactly what we want. Um, with uh, we do yeah, there is a booth. There's a little booth for uh, for Vinium. It's essentially what we want. As we mentioned before about you know, um, you know, separating the grape and Vinium brand slightly, uh, just so it's kind of fits nicely with you know degen crowd, Mimi, you know, fun grape side. And then more of like, you know, less degen. Well, that's a good, that's yeah. a good question, though, whether there should be a giant bowl of grapes. Is that that <laughs> much? <laughs> or tell, wine, uh, or, or grape in wine. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell, um, <laughs> put tell it up Steve, there. bring it, bring a bowl yeah. of grapes. <laughs> yeah, like kilos, like, like, like 10 kilos or something. <laughs> 10 kilos. <laughs> Just bring a crate, <laughs> crate of grapes. Yeah. Some some, some liminal marketing is what we're trying. <laughs> right? yeah. Need grapes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean that that's gonna be a good event because it's um it's it's a networking thing basically, really. That's what you go to those events for. Um and you know, the the, the big names from um you know, reps from uh uh but, but you know, major L ones and L2s are going to be there, like, you know, our, our, uh, the, the Vinium booth is right next to the Arbitrum booth. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, Arbitrum is pretty big uh, L layer yeah. 2 on Ethereum. It's uh, a lot of lot of cool things being built there. Um, obviously, Avalanche is going to have a booth there as well. Um, and, um, I mean, Z, ZK Sync will have a booth there as well. I mean, you know, so it's essentially we can get some good first-hand contacts uh, with reps from um these uh th these layers these actual you know the pro proper foundations basically uh which yeah. are uh essentially priceless networks pr priceless connections so um you know I, i'm you know i'm uh it's i think it'll be uh i think it's it will be a good Good event, to be honest. I think it's going to be it's it's uh it's going to be a good uh good networking event. Um, I think we're sort of at the end, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You guys have anything <laughs> else to uh add? Just want to say. Well, uh, remember we have the <laughs> competition on for winemaker. Yeah, the top twenty. If you're in the top twenty, a winemaker, it's a race. They they've been increasing uh, VPM. You have to uh, you have to strategize how you. Uh, you have um, to move quick, otherwise you get pushed off. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's actually competitive. It's it's pretty it's pretty cool. We also have um, some new things coming for Winemaker very shortly. So, uh, do you want to elaborate on that, LB? Uh, well, I guess um, we'll um, we'll let you know. I mean, <laughs> we are um, we are we're we're looking at developing quite a few things for Winemaker, actually. Um, and because uh, I think you know, as I mentioned in in this AMA, even in all the other AMAs as well, that uh, it's like a really good um, is basically the best burn mechanism. So we want to continue along 
uh, incentivizing that as much as possible. So, and I think it's cool. It's like ties in with the great brand really well, being like a, um, you know, sort of like a GameFi, um, you know, the GameFi side of, of the brand, I think, uh, is, uh, Something I really like. It's something I, I think I want to focus on a little bit as well. So, I mean, there's a couple things happening. So, I mean, you'll hear about it uh, very soon. Um, I think I made yeah. Neat Grape happy there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I am now part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if uh, anyone else want to say anything, any other questions, want to say anything for the week or you know, anything in general. No, I'm, not, I, I'm good. Yeah, I think I just want to thank everyone in the community as always. It's uh, mm. you guys make it a great place to be, and it's a lot of fun talking and hanging and thinking <laughs> through things with you guys. So keep keep it up. It's always fun. Yeah, of course. Always good. Always good engagement and you know support from the community and you know there's a lot of cool ideas that run around as well, which is uh, always nice to um. Have uh, you know the 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 users of the product essentially uh, tell you what they want? Because <laughs> then you can. It's just like really good to uh, to be able to know what to deliver. <laughs> yeah, that's how you get product market fit, as yeah, the, the, yeah. the VC people say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. I mean, if that's if that's uh, about it, I guess um, thanks everyone for um, for listening. Thanks for all your questions, and um, we'll be here next week, probably same time. Yeah, probably oh. I'll, I'll be there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. No worries. All good. You, you came in anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, thanks guys. Well, thanks obviously. for listening. In. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. So Bye-bye.